Good evening and welcome. Today we celebrate the solemn mass of the Supper of our Lord. Please stand. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My dear friends, we are gathered together on this holy night to begin the Easter Triduum. United with the Church throughout the world, we commemorate the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We begin as he did at the Passover table of the Last Supper. This morning, united with priests and people of the Diocese of Pittsburgh, Bishop Zubik consecrated the Holy Chrism and blessed the oils that we receive this night and which we will use in the celebration of the sacraments of the church. By means of these powerful symbols, the crucified and risen Savior will continue in our midst the work he began at his death and resurrection, forgiveness, healing, and new life. Oriol of the Sick. The Oriol of the Sick that has been blessed by our bishop for the healing of body, mind, and soul, may those touched by this oil experience the compassion of Christ in his saving love.
the catechumens. The oil of the catechumens that has been blessed by our bishop and used during the rite of infant baptism and to bless the adult catechumens. May those anointed with this oil be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all of its forms as they prepare for the saving waters of baptism. sacred chrism. The holy chrism, a mixture of olive oil and perfume, which has been consecrated by our bishop and the priest of our diocese. It is used to anoint infants after baptism, those who are due to be confirmed, bishops and priests at their ordination, and altars in churches at the time of their dedication. May all people in churches touched with this oil be signs and witnesses of God's love and faithfulness. Let us pray. 
Oh God, you have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son went about to hand over himself to death entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life as we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb, in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are, Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist, and then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. And Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet, and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow so that what I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, what's in a name? Again? So, what's in a name? I think literature, and our common experience tells us a lot. Names are important. Not only our own names, but names we give to things. 
Well, that's true in our life as a community of faith. So in the very beginning, when the disciples celebrated what Jesus told them to do, remember me when you take this bread and take this wine. What did they call it? And it wasn't simple because they didn't want to call it, well, it's just the Passover, because it was more than that, and it was unique because Jesus wasn't there. Oh, well, then the Last Supper. Well, but that was certainly different and unique, but this is different. And in some communities, they began to just call it the assembly. Some places, they called it the breaking of the bread. But what to call it was important. Now, most of the Christians lived in a Greek world. Although Rome was in charge, the remnants of Alexander the Great were still there. And most people spoke Greek. And so they said, let's use the word eucharistane, a Greek word. Everybody knew it. Very common. It means to give thanks. So they said, that's, that's great. Because Passover is really that, giving thanks for what God did for his people. And at the Last Supper, Jesus gave thanks and then gave it to them. And we are so grateful for the salvation of Jesus that he won for us on the cross. That makes so much sense. Let's use that word. And that word becomes Eucharist, a Eucharistine Eucharist. But intriguingly, it's a verb. And we know from grade school, verbs are action words. So what we do at this altar is supposed to be an action that we all do together and we all do when we leave. The Eucharist isn't just a noun that, oh, we did that and now we'll live our regular life. Eucharist is a verb, to give thanks. And so every time we celebrate the Mass, every time we give thanks, and also accept the responsibility of living it. So it's rightful to say, did, did you Eucharist today? Oh yeah, I went to Mass. No, I meant the rest of the day. Well, what does that mean? Well, at the Last Supper, he washed feet and served his disciples. So that's all part of it. Huh. And he said, I was hungry, did you feed me? I was thirsty, did you give me drink? That's another part of it. It's a powerful moment in all of our lives when we do what Jesus told us to do. And our liturgical experience is that what we do is a verb. It requires action. When we leave tonight, what will we do about the Eucharist? How will we live it? How will we proclaim it? A Eucharist name, to give thanks, means for you and me to Eucharist every day of our lives. It's a verb. Please stand. With faith, we come before the Lord with the needs of our hearts.
and our lives. Father, Pope Francis, and all church leaders, that they may continue to guide us and help us deepen our faith, let us pray to the Lord. For the gift of peace, that God will bring an end to all war and violence and help everyone to recognize the beauty and dignity of human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Oh God, hear us, hear our For all of us, that we may open our hearts in loving service to others in our families, parish, and community, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are ill and suffering, that God's healing hand may touch them and bring them comfort and peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the living and deceased members of St. Mark Parish, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Oh God, hear us, hear our Lord God, as we give you thanks at this Eucharist, help us to live out our thanks throughout our lives as we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Thank you. 
let us pray. That our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, who is the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. O Lord, grant us that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering in his memory as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. As we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with all the saints and angels, we proclaim your glory as without end, we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for the gift of this most holy Eucharist. May it be for us a foretaste of the eternal banquet you prepare for us in heaven as we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel. 